welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, November the 8th. We will sing four songs, have a couple of prayers, and I will uh, deliver a lesson. Uh, it will be the third in a series of uh, seven lessons revolving around the seven desires of the heart. And so let's start with our song service. We're singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. And if you would, uh, turn your songbooks to number 589. 589. <clears throat> we will sing the first and the third verses of this song. 589. Okay. Okay. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus. Leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. If you would turn now to number 792. Seven ninety two. My eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, my prayers are cold, and I know how I song before the prayer will be number 523. 523. <coughs> we'll sing the first and third verses of this song also. First and third.
I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord will find a way for me. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will find a way for me. Won't it be grand to hear him say, Well done. Won't Won't it it be grand to hear him say, Well done. If I walk in heaven's light, Shun the wrong and do the right, Won't it be grand to hear him say, well done. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for your part in our lives. And uh, we just know uh, how wonderful it is to have a loving God and a just God and a merciful God in our lives. We're so grateful that you sent Jesus to us at the right time, that while we were yet sinners, that we could come to you. We could, uh, under your umbrella of grace, have our sins forgiven. We know, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, you're with us and that you guide us and comfort us and you protect us. I just pray that uh, you would uh, continue to Uh, be with us uh, each day of our lives and uh, be with those that uh, we care about, uh, be with those that uh, we love and uh, help them to to understand that uh, we love them because we love you. As this election has come to an end and uh, we just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we will come together as a country that uh, we will put aside uh, the uh, angst sometimes that went through the election procedure, and we will realize that uh, we are indeed one nation under God, and we are all one people, and that uh, we need to be united uh, under uh, the laws of this land. Continue to be with us this evening. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And this song is kind of in keeping with uh, the lesson uh, this evening. It is number uh, 527. 527. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I'm no longer the same He touched me touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blood, Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him, and I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me, oh, he 
touch me and know the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. We started a series of lessons three weeks ago. These lessons were based on a, a book by Mark and Deborah Laser, uh, which was entitled The Seven Desires of Every Heart. And we have, uh, uh, I have, I guess, uh, deemed that uh, it would be worthwhile for us to go through these. And uh, there is no particular order. There's no ascending or descending order. Two weeks ago, we talked about the need to be heard and to be understood. Uh, last week, we talked about the need to be affirmed. This week, we are going to talk about the value of a touch. The value of a touch. Many, many books, articles, uh, magazines, uh, many studies uh, have been done. Uh, there is a handbook of touch. Uh, uh, it is a, a book of neuroscience, behavioral, and health, uh, health perspective, and uh, uh, it's out there. And uh, the, the author gives this approach to touch, human touch. Of the five senses, touch is developed first and informs self-awareness. When humans come in close contact with one another, even in minor ways, the hormone uh, oxytocin, oxytocin is released. This hormone responds to nerve stimulation by activating a feeling of well-being and, along with that, stress relief. It also helps individuals to let their defenses down and open up to the possibilities of trusting one another. Now, trust also stimulates a nerve in our body called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S, and it branches out throughout our whole body. The nerve's primary role is to slow down the nervous system. As a result, very often through touch, uh, heart rate goes down, blood pressure drops, and stress hormone levels fall. Now, within the range of people, let's, uh, let's go to either end of the spectrum. The value of touching children. We know that physical contact helps very, very little children, and it, it contributes to their ability to regulate their emotions. Babies, when we touch them, uh, we use, it usually elicits some type of, uh, of smile. And uh, their psychological health and even physical growth, I believe, is dependent upon human touch. Within families, we, we touch one another. And it's important for parents to hold and cuddle their little children. And here's a group that is really left out, the elderly. Uh, 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 Micah Lowe, a PhD uh, in this particular area, uh, wrote a book called Aging Our Way. And she reveals that human touch is as important to, um, I guess, personal development of 
aged people, especially you know, in their 80s and 85 and older, as it is to newborns. It, it helps people to feel connected. Very, very often, elderly people feel like they've been kind of kicked to the curb. You know, they don't have that the youthful looks. Uh, men may have very little hair. Um, uh, you know, all of those things and the wrinkles that go along with aging. And they almost view themselves as, as uh, people that, that nobody wants to touch. And um, they rely on human touch and survival and overall well-being, just as little small children do. And so here's a hopefully a, a good summary. Touch strengthens your immune system, improves sleep, reduces stress, ramps up the body's production of natural painkillers. Now, uh, I've given you kind of the upside in these days of the uh, pandemic that we're in the midst of, we don't touch anybody, do we? Uh, Jane, my wife, uh, is the only person that I have had physical contact with as far as touching and hugging um, in you know close to nine months. Um, despite that, even if we weren't in the midst of a pandemic, people are touching one another less. Uh, the social media has something to do with that. We interact more on social media than we do in person. When you're out, you often see people listening to music, or checking their phone, which leaves less of an opportunity for contact. It means that we're missing out on the advantages of human contact. Now, I'll throw a disclaimer out there. I know that there are people out there that feel uncomfortable with touch. Uh, it may go back to something that happened, you know, way back when they may not even know why they feel the way they do. And I understand that. I am using this uh, as a very, very general um, part of the seven desires of every heart. That being said, I think now it's kind of important for us if we get into some biblical examples of touch. Now, you know what? There's difference in touch and people being touchy-feely. Um, we need to touch one another, not for some physical uh, gratification, but for the care that we have for the people that we are touching. And so you might be surprised as you turn your Bibles through the pages of the Gospels to see how many times Jesus touched people. All right? This is Jesus. This is our Savior. This is the Son of God. Why did he do that? Well, it is chronicled in the Bible that Jesus was able to heal from afar off. His powers were that great. But we do know that Jesus, according to Matthew 19, verses 13 to 15, Mark 10, 13, had little children come up to him. Kind of almost, it was almost like they, they wanted to be close to him, and they crowded in on him. You remember the disciples thought that the children were kind of being a pain in the neck, and they wanted the parents grab up these kids and get them out of here. And Jesus said, let the children come to me. 
And these children were touched by Jesus. Now let's go to another side of the spectrum. In Matthew 8, 3, Mark 1, 41, and Luke 5, 13. Are you ready for this? Jesus touched lepers. Lepers. Leprosy was the uh, HIV of 2,000 years ago. In essence, it wasn't as bad as the people thought it was, and it wasn't contagious the way people thought it was. But when something, someone got leprosy, they were considered outcasts. There were leper colonies all around, dotted in different places. The people could not even go back to their families again. Jesus touched people with leprosy, and these people, probably many of them, hadn't been touched in years. And he touched them most of the time to heal them. Peter's uh, mother-in-law got sick, according to uh, Matthew eight fifteen, And Jesus came in, and he put his hands on her, and he made her well. Now, could he have done it without putting his hands on her? Yes, we know he had that power. But there was something about that touch that I think Jesus thought was important. He touched people that were blind. He touched people that could not walk. He touched people who could not hear. I'm not making this up on the fly. Matthew chapter 9, 29. Matthew chapter 20, verse 24. Mark chapter 7, uh, Mark chapter 7 verse 33. He touched those people. Now you're going to say, okay, well, you know what? Uh, most of the time when he touched them, he, he healed them. Yep. But it, it was almost as if it were a sidelight of his healing. And I'll give you another one that maybe you haven't even thought of. When Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration and the three disciples that he had with him were scared and were afraid. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 6 and 7, it says that Jesus touched them and told them not to be afraid. It's almost as if the touch was part of them not being afraid. Now, we can reverse that because people often touched Jesus. In Luke chapter 7, verse 39, we have the example of the sinful woman that touched Jesus. We have the woman who, who uh, was plagued with this, this hemorrhaging for years and years. And she said, if I could just touch the garment of Jesus, I'll be healed. Now, even as the disciples gathered together to observe the Passover with Jesus, uh, it would seem that they didn't eat quite the same way that we eat today. Uh, if you notice, the wording in our Gospels is they reclined. And it would seem that when they reclined, they leaned against one another, actually, while they ate. Isn't that interesting? Uh, if you need backup for that, just to make sure that I'm, I'm not making this stuff, this stuff up, John chapter 19, verse 23. All right. Jesus, the person, is gone, and we make our way into the book of Acts. Right, we make our way into the book of Acts. And that society, like many societies, 
greeted one another. Now, you know, we might just say, hey, hi, how are you doing? But very often they greeted one another with a kiss on the cheek. Now, the New Testament writers called it a holy kiss. A holy kiss. And it, it, there, it is not just one example. Romans 16, 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 20, 2 Corinthians 13, 12, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 26, and 1 Peter 5, 14. They greeted one another with a holy kiss. It was a kiss of love to, to show uh, how much they cared about one another. Now, in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9, they greeted by holding hands. They, they touched. We do that also. And many of us, and I know that I'm one of it, one of them, usually, especially with people that I'm familiar with, the, the handshake kind of turns into an embrace or a hug. And it is our way of, of conveying our feeling toward one another. Now, I've got another kind of unusual one for you. They touched one another through a ceremonial way called, you ready for this? The laying on of hands. Not only was it for the purpose of pronouncing a blessing or, uh, or uh, letting the one on whom the hands were laid to know that they were with them, but it would also accomplish the benefits or letting the one on whom hands were laid, the benefits that were described. The church at Antioch, before they sent Paul and Barnabas out on the first missionary journey, you can read it, Acts chapter 13, verse 3, it said they laid their hands on them, they touched them, and then sent them out. In 1 Timothy, we have uh, the uh, qualifications of elders and deacons. And Paul instructed Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22, that they were to lay hands on the elders when they were appointed to that position. We, we sometimes even carry this over into the church in the 21st century. And so, uh, the idea of this desire to be touched or the need to be touched, all the benefits that I, I talked about that were needed back in the first century, I believe are still needed today and that they still provide the same results. When we embrace someone that we care about, it's that extra special um, action that says we really, really care about them. And as the body of Christ here on earth, we need to do as Jesus did. Jesus reached out uh, to people. And he did indeed touch others. And we are family. And we need to express our feelings in sometimes more than just words. We need to be willing to, to reach out so that people will know that we, we care. If Jesus would touch sinners... If he would touch people who were 
physically defective. In many cases, people thought that they had these physical defects because they did something wrong or their parents had done something wrong. If, if Jesus touched people who had leprosy, we need to let those maybe who other people might reject know that we care and know that we accept them. And for many of them, it may be, a, you know, uh, it may have been a long time when they had been touched with some kind of meaningful message. And there is a meaningful message to that when we embrace or we shake hands or we kiss one another on the cheek. When uh, we let the elderly know that we still care about them. Let's remember the, the benefits of and the value in touching those of all ages in all physical conditions. And who knows, a, a touch may, be, may mean much, much more than anything that we might actually say to them. And so, uh, as we uh, complete this lesson this evening, let's look, as we're, we're kind of a, a studying the, the seven desires of the heart, and knowing that one of those desires is the need for physical contact, the need to be touched. And take that with you tonight and, and give it some thought and uh, understand, uh, and, I, and I guess I know, uh, during this pandemic, I don't want you to go out and grab people and tell them how much you care about them, all right? We have a limitation here. When, when things get better, I think we can return back to normal. It may take a while. But the, the, uh, you know, the real understanding behind all of this, behind the idea of a physical touch, is that we, we express in an overt physical action what our feelings that we might not be able to verbally express will say to us. Let's have a prayer together. Our God and Heavenly Father, I just pray that uh, through our songs and through our prayers and through uh, getting into your word and, and examining uh, something that is, is very biblical, the idea, the need to be, to be touched, uh, that we will reflect on, uh, that we will reflect on, on how much we want to please you and praise you. I hope that our songs praised you adequately. I hope that our prayers uh, reflected our needs and our desires and there was thanksgiving in those prayers. And I, I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, through the rest of this evening, that you'll just continue to be with us, that you will bless us, that you will comfort us. And I just pray that, uh, that uh, through you, uh, we will um, have life and have it abundantly. Forgive us, dear Heavenly Father, because we make mistakes. Uh, and uh, just continue to be with us. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Stay safe, and may God bless you all. On top.